So it's time for the first speaker, Etienne Bruno, who will be speaking about new challenges for beekeeping, climate changes and well-being. Now, so that you know who Etienne is, he is the managing director of CARI, the president of the working group for Honey in Kapakojeka, the president of Academic Council in Apimondia for quality and technology in beekeeping. His interests focus on climate change, sustainable uh, beekeeping, bee produce, so market, falsifying goods, quality and properties. Etienne, the floor is yours. <clears throat> thank you, thank you to for this splendid introduction. Uh, I will start with a subject that is not so evident for the beekeeper. It's a new challenge for beekeepers, climate change, and everybody know and hear about this uh, climate change. And bee welfare, it's uh, more the, the future, and perhaps in the future, this, this will be a key um, point for the beekeepers. So next slide, please. So the reflection today that we climate change is one of the most important threats today for beekeeping. The extreme events can bring a lot of new problems in the eyes. As you know, beekeepers can see the direct impact on their production and on their business. This last year uh, illustrates very well these kind of uh, elements. And so we understand now that one of the solutions is to increase the resilience of bee. And it's not so evident. We will see and we'll give some elements on this. And in this context, we have to, to take in mind uh, that the bee welfare start to be one of the key elements that we have to take in consideration. Next slide. Next, please. Yeah, thank you. We will analyze shortly the different effect of climate change, the direct and indirect impact on bees and beekeeping. And we will see how we can try to reduce the negative impact linked to the weather. We will take in consideration the needs of bees and we will see what, can, uh, learn, what we can learn from feral bee colonies. This nature will give, you, will give us some solution and we have to take this in consideration. Next. So climate change impacts. So the climate is recording big changes with a global uh, increase of the temperature, um, we can see this that the season changed a lot with the, the, the in the past it was not it was very regular no each season is different and we we can't find exactly what we we know and we will see this with more details we have also and this is even more important for the beekeepers it's a in an increased uh, frequency of event like uh, linked to temperature with extreme high and low temperature heat waves, even link to the water, global and heavy precipitation, river flooding, and droughts. So it's the, the opposite are present every time. And we have also increase of the storm. This is a lot of things that in front of this, it's very hard to, to react and we don't know where we are, we are going now. Next slide. We will enter in details. There is the, the curve that you can see. It's the NASA will give this. Um, you see the blue one are in the past, if you can tell. It's the in the 1880. And you see it was more than uh, 100 years ago. We were in the blue. And the temperature increased. We go blue, green, uh, red. And now we are more in the red. And each year, we are nearly at the top of this sequence. This shows clearly that the, the temperature is increasing at the world level. This is really uh, evident there. The next, this is more clear. And this is uh, something is surprising because when you analyze all the things, they tell, oh, normally we will uh, arrive to 1.5 persons of increase of temperature. And the, the situation, the global situation, it's true. We are even less. We are, uh, you see, it's the curve, uh, the down curve. We are with, with one de degree of increase. But when you see the Europe, the European situation, it's completely different. We are already at two degrees of increase of temperature. 
you see this curve is really surprising and and when you can analyze this you think oh, oh where are we going there because the curve that we saw there was for the global world if i can tell and now we are in europe here and in europe the, the situation is worst it's one of the worst situation in the world so the next slide so this is the this, this was the climate now we will see what's the impact on the honey production at the european level there, there are the data coming from the FAO, so it's not perfect data, as everybody knows. It's the, the each country has to to give to send the data to the, the FAO, and this gives this uh, these things. What can we see? It's a global increase of uh, the the production. This is clear, and we can see that the center. It's uh, there. It's there that we have the, the highest production. But what we will see on the next slide, it's the situation more detailed, region by region. And there, I uh, I use the the balance. I put every everything uh, everybody at uh, in 2008 at 100, and so we will see the increase during this uh, 12 years. And there you can see that in the north part the production uh, increased a lot. We arrived at more than 200 persons of what was produced more than 10 years ago. So to increase the production in 10 years and to double this production, it's something completely surprising. For the Central Europe, it's more, we, we bring 20, 30 persons, 40 persons, it depends on the year. You see the variability. It's completely surprising because with a, uh, such a number of countries, it's a very big, big, big variation. And in the south, it was more constant. There you can see something, it's coming from, it was presented by the Italian persons during the, uh, the pollinator weeks in the, at the Europe. And it's the CONAPI, the data from the CONAPI, it's a cooperative in Italy. And you see the evolution of the, the number of beehive it's the number of beehive is increasing a lot, increasing a lot. But when you see the production in in Italy stay constant, what does it mean? It means that in Italy they are no no stay on no please come back yeah gonna be uh, not <laughs> next yeah this stay there and there you can see. You can see the evolution of the, the productivity per hive. This is decreasing and we are in the south. So what can we tell? Globally, uh, no, not, thank you. Yeah, you can, globally, we, you see uh, the, the productivity was of 20 kilo per hive and now they are at 10 per kilo per hive. So, but when you see the statistic of production, the production stay the same. Please, is it possible to, yeah. Uh, so it's important to, to understand when, when you see the curve, it's not so evident. We have to take in consideration a lot of different impacts. But in the south part of Europe, in the Mediterranean part, it shows that the production is decreasing. So in the north part, the production is increasing a lot, and in the south, the production is decreasing. Next slide. Thank you. <laughs> so. As you know, the, naturally the bees are coming from tropical zone, and so it's normal that the bees disseminate everywhere in the world, and so they can survive in different conditions of temperature. So for them, increase of temperature, yes, it's important, but it's not so so important if I can tell. But what you can, what we we saw there, it's that uh, the the increase of the temperature has a global positive impact on the north countries. In south, where the temperature allow a long season of activity, other climate events are operating. And so we, it's what we will try to see more deeply there. Okay, next. There, it's just a seasonal temperature. So we, we analyze the global situation. Now we will see season by season. And what you can see on this different graph, spring, summer, autumn, winter, the red part, it's a increase of temperature and more red, more, more temperature. And you can see that in the spring, in the summer, in the autumn, and in the winter, 
Europe has always with very high temperature. And this is the problem. When see, you see other parts of the world, when South Africa and this kind of things, it's much, it's more constant. It's not so important impact. But in Europe, you see that, yeah, you have a lot of red, red parts. Uh, even in, a, in Russia, they're, they're, they have a, a very big problem too. Okay, next. And it's more detailed here. And you can see that in, the, in Europe, it's more the east part of Europe with touch in spring. And it's really important for Pol a country like Poland, Russia, and this part of, uh, of Europe is really touched by these uh, elements because the sea is more, uh, with the sea, it's easier to, to maintain a more stable temperature. But when you have continental uh, situation, the temperature is increased a lot. Yes, the next for the spring. And the next is uh, summer, and you can see there it's exactly the same, even worse situation for the summer. And this will have a direct impact on the, the, the situation in beekeeping. And we will see what. Yeah, next, please. So here it's uh, some, there are some publications. No, the, the, in the past it was very, very few publications. And now this, the number of publications is increasing a lot. Here we can see the long-term effect of temperature on the on a yield and the, the on a phenology. And what you can see it's the when we analyze the on activity and beekeeping in southern Poland, Poland, and the, during the period 1965 and 2010, you see increase of temperature this late spring and summer and increase yield and increase number of harvests. So in the past you have two harvests, now we can have three harvests some season. A later final harvest and a longer season. This is the, the situation more in Poland. Yes, the next please. This is uh, in Moldavia, impact of climate change and on air temperature on vital activity of the bee family. And there you can see air temperature is a dominant factor in colony activity, especially for January to June. And there we have a lot of different impacts on the pro pro uh, prolificity of queens, on honey production, on brood viability. And you can see in the in increase in January, I think this impact on the on the queen production, on the honey production, and sometimes it go in one direction. In other case, it can go in in another direction. So this increase in temperature of in spring can have a lot a lot of impact in in summer too, but it's more during J January to June that these impacts are really important for the for the beekeeping. And it can have also negative impact on overwintering in the, in the next year. So what you observe one year can have an impact on the next year. This is also important. Next, please. So big change during the season, adaptation of the, the life cycle of, can be severely disrupted. What we can observe, and it's uh, completely surprising in country like Belgium with more temperate, we can observe periods of disrupting of eggs laying. It was observed in the past just in uh, Andalusia, in, in Spain. And now we have observed this, the same kind of situation in Belgium. I, I don't know the situation in Poland or in other uh, continental region, Hungary and this kind of thing, but it, I think that the beekeeper today they, they observe these kind of things and it's completely surprising and they don't know what to do in this kind of situation. Warmer, warmer off season are often observed and brood breaks are reduced or non-existent with direct impact on varroa structure. There you, you will have a, a specific speech on this, so I will not develop this today uh, in my conference. There is a need of uh, for highly resilient bees because. Today, if you have very splendid bees who are completely adapted to your specific climate, it's a problem because climate is changing so quickly that it's impossible. You must have a kind of bee who can resist to a lot of different situations and who can be, who can adapt 
this is cyclical to the frequent climate change. And this requires a high level of biodiversity. This is a key word for the future. We have to maintain and even to develop the biodiversity in our bees. Nearly all the, the selection program go in the same direction to reduce the, the to have the only splendid colony. Today, what, is, what can be a splendid colony? It's not so evident. This applies both at the colony level. So when you, have, you think that the fecundation for the bees, it's really important because uh, if you have 10 drones or if you have 18 drones, the, the diversity of the bee present in your colony is completely different. And so today it's important to have a very big diversity in, the, in your bee colony. And for the big population, it shows that to, to have this biodiversity, you need to have a very big diversity in the, bee, in the bee population. Next slide. Impact on selection. We don't know what we will need in the future, so it's nearly impossible to fix specific criteria, except resilience. It's, it's very hard to know what we will be, what will be the future today. We must avoid any bottleneck in selection. This is important because if we have very strong bottleneck, we lose a lot of biodiversity. And so I think it's just my personal view. I think today we have to discuss this with a lot of scientists. It's, it's perhaps we have a lot of different situations and you will have a speaker here who can pre will present some, some situation more um, developed than, than this. But I think that mass selection plan are well suited to, to this situation. The choice of, line, uh, of lines should be made on the basis of at least two years of, of observation, and if possible, with very different climate conditions. Because if you observe only on specific climate conditions, how can you be sure then if the climate change, uh, what will be the future? You don't know. We have to base our selection on queens who can survive a longer time, not only one year. It's no sense this. And human intervention support on the colony to be selected should be kept to a minimum to select their resilience. It's sure that if you f if you give food to the bee every time, no, you can't select a resilient bee. So you have to leave a lot to to leave them to to survive naturally, if I can tell. And on this base, you can make a better selection. In nature, bees don't need humans. Yes, next, please. Seasonal warming and flora. Yes, sure. We just we were talking of bees, but the flora is also impacted. Plants temporize well the temperature change. The root system is well uh, insulated, so it can. The, the plants are normally they don't move so so quickly. If you can tell, start of vegetation according to the number of hot days, and everybody know this. Uh, if you have X number of odd days, this, the, the flower will come. And if they don't have, they, they will not come. And the, the German persons, they analyze 650 different plants coming from the northern hemisphere. And they, they saw that 1.9 day in advance in spring on 10 years. It's a lot. It's, it looks very short, but not. And on 385 plants from England, 4.5 days between the 80s and the 90s. And today, I think it must be more important. So what does it mean? It increased the risk of late frost and flora of flower buds destroy, like this year with the acacia. Yes, next, please. There you have the graph who show you the climate change and the importance in the, you see for the spring, it's uh, the, the flowering can come 27 days before the normal day. It's a lot, 12 days, and you see the, this graph. And some plants are, are delayed with nine or 12 days, but very few. And for the summer, it's not so Im important, but for the spring, it's a really, really important. Okay, next. So, food and plant adaptation, it's not so evident because when, we, when you have your bee colony there and the, the, the flora are not the same, 
they change. The nectar production is changing. And when you, you can see for the acacia, the, the region of acacia in Italy, the initial region where they produce uh, nectar, today they, can't con they, they didn't continue to produce nectar. The beekeeper, to, even if the acacia are always there, it's impossible to produce uh, uh, honey in this part of uh, Italy. So it's completely surprising. And now in Belgium, you can produce acacia honey. In the past, it was impossible. So you see, everything is changing very quickly. And uh, the beekeeper, they are confronted. They, they don't know what, they, what to do in this situation. They, the honey is changing. The, 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 floor, the, the bees are changing completely their behavior and the, the, the plant that they visit is completely different. The honey they produce is different. They produce honeydew in, in spring and not in uh, summer. Crazy things, you observe a lot of crazy things. And so the, the beekeeper has to react by moving to other food sources. And there we have a problem because more and more beekeeper are moving their bees to the, the beekeeper from the south part of Europe, they move their bees to, to, to get some flour. <laughs> and it's a lot of place where you, you found a lot of beekeeper today and there is competition between the bees. It's another problem that's coming there. So you see it's a lot of problem due to the flora and the, the, the change in the flora. And as, what can I tell this? This impacts uh, on the future crops. Uh, we will see what will be the future crops. The next slide. Ile czasu ja mówię? A to kolejny slajd. You can see there uh, the, the, the situation the world level. And you see the, the, the change who, who can be sure, but we will see the next the next slide, please. Yeah, it's the situation at the European level. It's two model of prediction. And uh, the first one is the I think we we are up of this model today. We are more near the, the second one on the, the right part of the, the slide. And this, you can see the change. 30 percent of the crops are changing in the future, in most of the part of, the, of Europe. And this is a real, real problem because what will be the what what will be the future crops in your country? I don't know. And now it's a, a lot of discussion with the farmers what do they want to produce, which, what do we want to develop with them. And there we have to work together to, to create our future for the, to, to keep, to can continue to keep bees. It's not so evident. It's a, it's a big challenge for the future. Yeah, next slide, please. There, it's just the increase of the temperature. Now we will see the increase of frequency of extreme event. And there it's, um, it's a figure who show you the importance of the different things. So the drought, the extreme temperature, the flood, the, the flood. You see, this is a big part. Landslide, it's not, the beekeeping is not concerned. Storm, yeah, sure. And wildfire, we, we talk a lot of the wildfire. In, uh, we'll see. Next, please. This is the... I like a lot this uh, graph because it shows us the in evolution of the e extreme weather event. And you see the evolution, it depends on the, the kind of ge geophysical event, meteorological event, hydrological event, and climate, clim climatological event. And you see, for some of them, it's an increase of 50 persons, but for others, it's 400 persons of increase for the, the hydrological event, it's a big, big problem there. And we saw this every year now we have problem. So this, the future, when you see this, it's, uh, wow, where are we going? So next slide, please. This year and particularly last summer, Europe was affected by extreme weather event, unexpected in terms of their impacts. First, Everybody has in his memory, July was marked by dramatic flood in Germany and Belgium, killing over 200 persons and bees a lot of too. We lose, in Belgium, we lose a lot of uh, bee colony in the flu. In addition, at least 10 wildfires have destroyed hundreds of thousands of hectares, particularly in Greece, France, Spain and some Balkans countries. 
And this, uh, we receive a report from the Greek persons, they lose one third of their zone of production because it's a pine region was affected there. One third of this production is destroyed for the 10 next 10 or 20 years next year because the fire is there. It's destroyed all the pine. What can we do in front of this? You see, the, the impact is completely crazy. Next. It's a, a map who show you where we can find, we can find uh, extreme climatic events. And you see uh, the big dots are very catastrophic events. And you see that all the parts of Europe are touched, all. No one country is not you can find these kind of things everywhere. And it's completely uh, sur not surprising, but it's it's a real pity if we can tell, tell this. It's, uh, nobody can tell, oh, no, it's not for me. In the past, we, we, th we were th thinking that, oh, it's more for the Asian per per uh, country or for the island in the, near the sea or this kind of things. No, surely not. Everybody is concerned by this phenomenon. And so all the bees are concerned too. The next slide. I will illustrate this kind of even crazy, even crazy season. season. Perhaps I think today I can use all the year, but in 2020 in Europe, in March, we, we, are, we start by the storm, Karin storm. And you see the, the, the map when you have dark color, it's extreme events. And there it's uh, the mm. extreme temperature in the, the temperature in the, yeah, the air. The, the, you see, it's very exceptional temperature. And so with this exceptional uh, temperature, all the persons in the east part of Europe, they were sowing uh, sunflower in the same time. Normally, they saw a part, another part, uh, 15 days later, and this kind of things. And no, this year, it was perfect time, perfect weather. Everybody, uh, the, the, they saw the, their sunflower in the same time. So the next slide, play, please. Next slide, yeah, thank you. April, exceptionally dry and sunny over most Europe. So it was the first month perfect, second month sunny. So what you observe? All the flowers are blowing everywhere, more in the east part. And you see the, the red part there, it's, it's cra crazy. So everything, everybody, enfin, the spring was in advance, if I can tell. The next, May. And there, when the bee colony were ready to, to and they, it's, it's difficult for them to, to be completely ready to, to can uh, use this, uh, opportunity of uh, flower, but the next month when they were ready, cold night and snow, everything was destroyed. Everything was destroyed. So we, you have all the flower, but with the snow and the, 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 the cold night, even the, the buds uh, were destroyed. So no acacia and this kind of things. You see the impact, crazy. So it's May. So three exceptional were, uh, months. Next month, and the next slide, yeah, thank you, June. And there it's intense rainfall and flooding in, in Central and Eastern Europe. Yeah, so warm, warm, cold, and rainy after. And this, is, this was completely impossible for the bee. They can't go out. It's this, the, we are in the season there. No, no possibility to go and to, to harvest. It was a little crazy situation. Yeah, we'll see the next, July. And there, after this, dryness. <laughs> crazy. Once more, crazy situation, too dry. Too dry. It was rainy, too, too, too much water, and no, no one drop of water in July. So the summer, impossible to harvest, too dry. The next, August, it continued. And you see it in increase, even in August, no possibility to harvest. 
surely not nectar, but you have also a, pol a problem with the pollen. The pollen, it was too dry for the pollen. And the bees who, who has to produce winter bees without pollen, it was very bad. And this can have a direct impact on the wintering of the bee. So you can see it's just an illustration of the season. And you can see there what you can observe with your bees and the impact of the extreme event. The next slide. And yeah, it's just, uh, you can see Poland catastrophic year, 80 persons have uh, lost. Italy worst year on record. The 21 was exactly nearly the same. Hungary worst year. Austria worst year. Poland, mm. 20 persons of degrees. And you can continue Germany. And in Belgium, it was not so bad. And in Finland, 30 persons. So we think that at the European level, we lose 30 to 40 persons of the honey production. It's the, it was the first time that we lose so much honey production. Next. So, what tell the, the scientists? <laughs> the actual situation of beekeeping during the beekeeping season in the Mediterranean region has been characterized by an increase in climatic irregularities in recent years. As you can see, it's sure. But what's important, the unfavorable condition affect the evolution of bee popula uh, population, honey and pollen reserve significantly, the pollen spectrum, and the characteristic of honey. So all these parameters are really important for the professional beekeeper, and all are affected. Next slide. High and low extreme temperature is what, what can we do? Isolation of hive is more important than in the past. In nature, very good isolation. You see there, it's a cup. If we cut a, a tree there to see the, the bee colony, but you see the isolation there is perfect. And there they have a very good management of the ventilation. Beekeeping, we have to review the isolation and the design of our hive. <coughs> Bees need to have access to water near the colony. It's priority when temperature increase. The next, please. There we, we can have see the, the impact of heat waves. Uh, this is a colony. We, they put, they simulate some heat waves on the, the bee colony. And you can see that it's no impact on the water, the nectar, no impact on the pollen, but it's an impact on the, the, bee, the, the empty bees, so the bees who are completely empty. More of these bees are bringing water to the hive, but it's no impact on the nectar production and the pollen production. So it can be important to know this. The next slide. It's more important. We think that it's easy for a bee colony to decrease the temperature. And it's absolutely not the case. Colony cooling of col uh, a colony by one degree requires 1.4 times more work and genera generate 1.9 times more entropy than uh, eating uh, the colony by one degree. So to decrease the temperature is more expensive for the bee colony than to increase the, the temperature. And so the, the impact of global warming can create 90% uh, more anthropic stress, sure, but it's 40% of increase of uh, energy for the, the, the bee colony. So it's important to, to realize this. It's difficult for the bee to decrease the temperature. Okay, next slide. Excess of or absence of precipitation. The importance of water, lack of water can be a major cause of uh, colony mortality. The presence of water points is essential for the survive, uh, survival of bees. Dryness also affects nectar secretion, especially if the plants are not adapted to warm climate. Excess precipitation cleans nectar secretion. As you know, everybody knows this. Okay, next. The localization of the apiary is important to avoid flooding, sure, and to in, 
in the, the dryness period, you, you must have access to the water too. Long period without access to water, to nectar and pollen sources can be more and more present in the future. And so the, the, the beekeeper has to, to feed their bees. This is a problem. Generally, average colony are better than very strong colony, the better. This is really important. You don't have to have the splendid colony, the best. No, you have to have a good, but not too best, too, too, too high, too, 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 too big colony, because to survive during art season, it's very hard to, you have to feed the, the bees. So selection must be based not on the top, but on productive colony who don't need to be fed in time of hunger. This is really important. And beekeeper must always leave a part of it in the hive to avoid complete starvation. Okay, next. Period without foraging, but feeding increased. You see, in all the country in Europe, this is uh, trends, uh, global trends. Higher consumption during warm, warm winter of set feeding period need to feed a second time. Increase of in the number of scale of hungry period. Necessary to feed in honey production period. And this is a big problem with adulteration of the honey. Consumption of the harvested honey. Warning, sugar are not. Uh, it's are completely different from honey. They weaken the bee's immune system and increase the risk of contamination of honey due to zero prices. Selection must be based on low consumption of colony. Yeah, you see those feeding aspects are really important for the beekeeper. They, they have to take care a lot of what they are doing. Okay, the next. Pathogens, so I tell you, I will not develop this because um, this will be one speech there. But we have to know that we have to maintain and to develop the immune system of the bee. And so for this, we have to preserve the presence of populace in the hive to, to reduce the inter intervention. And, but you have to target the inter intervention and to give good alimentation. The next. So, what can we do? <laughs> Everything is moving very quickly. It's nothing is like in the past. And so we have to increase monitoring of the colony. It is practically impossible to rely on general rules based on date. We must be able to react quickly and interpret the situation according to the state of the colony. It takes a lot of flexibility and can adapt quickly. Equipment ready to serve in the eye feeding harvest of, uh, of other uh, products. On the harvest, it uh, changed from year to year, much more than in the past. And so everything is moving, as what I tell. We must quickly detect the sign of production of honey, pollen, biological material to ensure harvest. We have to go very quickly. Next. For better monitoring, there are um, non-intrusive uh, colony tracking system. Today, a lot, a lot of systems are developed on the market. Technically, uh, they, they can help the beekeeper. They allow to follow many parameters, the, the temperature, the humidity, the vibration, the sound, and a lot, the, the activity. <laughs> you can find a lot of different things. They provide information on the hive status and input. And if you put all this information together in, at a regional scale, you can have more detail, uh, more a better image of what's the, what, what, what's the situation in your region. Colonial uh, monitoring, rapid intervention, and better respect of the colony. Sure that with these tools, you can reduce your visit. And when you go to visit a colony, you must know what you are doing. The next, please. Don't forget, we need resilient bee because they are more adapted to this crazy situation. To main, and for this, we have to maintain maximum biodiversity in local bees, to work with local bees with maximum lifelines, preserve feral colonies. They can help us for the future because if they survive in nature, <laughs> it's, they are correct for us, and we can pick up some elements from this feral colony 
who can be really, really important. Carry out mass selection with natural fertilization, limit fertilization with control male lines. Sure that at a research level we have to continue in this line. I will not tell this, but for most of the beekeeper, I don't know if it's the good way to, to work. Avoid weakening of the bees immune system, take in consideration the need of bees, encourage good isolation of the colony. Yes, it's very easy to do. And uh, you have splendid materials who has developed by the, the producer there to help you to work in this direction. The next slide. So climate change can be seen as an opportunity. Apis mellifera is one of the best uh, at the bees best suited to manage the change. We need to adapt our beekeeping practice to become more responsive, invest in non-intrusive tools to get a clear picture of the situation, to get closer to nature to improve the resilience of our bees, informing farmers that our bees are essential partners for tomorrow agriculture because the solitary bees, they can't move so quickly and they can't adapt so quickly. So it's not so evident for the future. And pollination will be one of the most important uh, tasks for the many forest bees to tomorrow. Diversity of our production to maintain an economic balance. This is really important. You have yours where you can produce more pollen, yours with more honey. Royal jelly is more constant. Propolis is another bee product that you can valorize. And so for the persons, when you have this climate event where I've, every time you don't know what to do, but you have to have all the tools in your basket. Okay, next, please. I think I finished here. I thank you for your attention and earth and our bees are in your hands. I don't know if I have time. Three minutes for questions, I see. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Etienne, for the very interesting presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the case. More and more frequently, the global situations affect us uh, locally as well. Etienne, we do have a few questions to your very interesting presentation. We do not have a lot of time. Let's move on directly to questions, if possible. We will be very, very happy if you could answer. Yes, a lot of things are happening on the chat. So the question, how important are local climate changes for beekeepers and what a beekeeper can do to minimize them, I meaning minimizing the impact of local changes of the climate? I think that it's really what you can do. It's just to, to just when you work and when you make selection with his bees, I think the, the most important thing is to to can leave some, you, you don't have to keep all your bees. You have to keep the bees that can survive in the future. And for this, you have to make some kind of horrible selection. But if you have to need to feed all your bee colony every year a lot, no, it's not possible. You have to, to select the bee who, who don't need to, to be fed so, so much. The, you, you have, it's always, you have to, to work at a longer time, on, on longer per, period for the selection, not only for one year. You have to, to work on two, three, two, two, three years to see exactly who are, why, where you, you can find bees who can survive. And for this, this is one thing on the selection. The second thing is to reduce, to, to put your bees, to, to increase the possibility for, um, for her to, to have a better immune system. And there you keep the propolis in the bee, the, the bee colony. You have a good isolation. You don't. You have to think to the ventilation of your bee colony. All these aspects must be developed in the future. And there, I think, with license as partner, you can. You will do splendid things. Thank you very much, Etienne, uh, for a very thorough answer. Let's move on to the next question. Etienne. Your presentation was entitled New Challenges for Beekeeping, Global Climatic Changes and Bee Wellbeing. Could you explain, define this uh, term? Is it about honeybee, individuals, colonies? What are the criteria or well-being of insects? <laughs> I think we have a round table at the end of the, 
the day. Uh, I think we will have more time to develop this kind of well-being. It's, I think well-being of bees, it needs uh, one or two hours of speed. <laughs> I, I don't have so much time here. I just be more close to the nature. Don't put artificial bees who, who, are, who need you at each moment. This is not good. If they can survive, look at the nature. If I can tell, this is really important. What is doing the nature? And copy paste, take the pick up the, 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 the really important element there to adapt them to your uh, your uh, apiary. I will be very short, it's there. But I see the time is going very quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Next question. Climate changes can impact the length of life of queens. What can you say about that? Uh, it's not so evident to, to have scientific data about this. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think like this. I'm not sure. <laughs> because what do, what do we call climate change? Is it the increase of temperature? I think this is no impact. The, it, it's the extreme and the disponibility of the, the food is really important for the quality of the queens. And the, our way of selection, if we, how can you select queen if you change your queen every year? It's nearly impossible. You have to know if a queen can survive for five years. And if you select only queens who can survive five, four or five years, yes, you will develop queen who can survive four or five years. But if you change your queen every year, you can. It's impossible to see this. And in the nature, they can survive for five years, even with the climate change. Thank you very much for this answer. Next question. How can we connect the drop in the honey production with other problems like climate change, Varroa Vespa Velutina expansion, which is new in Europe, evolution of professional beekeeping? So what can you do with how these things are interconnected? Uh, it's sure that we have to. Uh, the, the question is very, <laughs> very broad. Um, it's sure that for a professional beekeeper, he must have different tools in his in his basket. So it's what I was telling you because uh, if he has, he, if he's only produce uh, honey, it's not so evident. Some year he will not produce, and they they have to organize themselves to. In one region they will produce this. In another region they will produce something else, and the productivity in in the usually on the long time period the variability of the production is 1.3 1 to 3 now we arrive to 1 to 5 so one year 5 kilo the other year 25 kilo per hive you see this is the, and so for this we have to organize ourselves and to to reduce the, the the movement of the bee to to organize the beekeeper together to to put in place uh, fridge to 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 keep the bee the, to can keep very big quantity of honey where well, when you produce 100 kilo per hive it's impossible to sell all but you have to keep the, this honey for the next year and the two or three next year but for this you have to use fridge and for you have to organize everything but one year when you produce less honey you can produce more pollen and you have to and to produce properly to have a, a constant income because propolis is more constant, you have to produce a little royal jelly to have a constant income too. You have a lot of way to work, but you have to, to diversify your production and to adapt yourself. Etienne, I heard uh, that you said that first we should avoid bottlenecks in selection, and the second thing you said that bees should be more left to nature. In nature, bees do not need humans. Don't you think there is a conflict between these two statements? <laughs> uh, sure, that uh, the, the big difference. We, when you you organize some selection based on only one or two criteria, this is dangerous. The big difference with nature, 
nature, they use multi criteria of uh, selection. And this is completely different. If you use multi criteria of selection, and if it's not a selection, yes or no, one year we change all. No, in, in nature, you one colony disappear. Uh, the, it's a fecundation between the colonies, so you keep with the, the male some potential of uh, the, ge the genome. You, you lose one part of genome, but you can get the other part by the male. And it's not so evident to, to lose everything. But when you make some selection, you have all your, your time. 1,000 colony, you change all the queen and you change all the selection because it doesn't go in your direction. There, it's much more dangerous. It's difficult to, to organize this. We have a discussion in uh, next week in the north-south uh, uh, journey, and there we will uh, speak of this. It's difficult, it's too short time to, to answer to this very difficult question. Yes, indeed, we have a lot of questions, a very interesting subject. Etienne, so far, we'd like to thank you very much for the great presentation and for answering the questions.